this album. It's a living. Get dressed first. Shame. You said your neck was bothering you. thought you wanted a massage. I do. See you after work, okay? Great. Any messages? Yeah. Todd Harris booked tomorrow at 10.30 in the bank hall. They're putting a stop on your credit card until you make a payment. What's new in the world, Lawrence? Supermarket in Oceanside. They fire this box boy. Two days later, he robs the place. Pistol whips a couple of checkers and puts a bullet in his boss. That kinder, gentler thing never did catch on. Marion? Mrs. Gelfin's been waiting 25 minutes. Drink coffee, Carrie? Yeah, I'll make some fresh. Thank you. Oh, and Marion. A woman called. Didn't leave her name. Next, much better. Thanks. Does this bother you? The only exercise you get is jumping to conclusion. Nope. When the coffee's ready. Yeah, 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 I'll bring it. Thank you. Horse pills. Chinese horse pills. Chinaman works for a friend of mine, tells me great aphrodisiac. Keeps the pencil pumped with lead. Never tried him. <laughs> You're young, sorta. For old guys like me, it's tough. Don't save some for the old lady, she thinks you're spreading it around. Right. What's troubling you, kid? Two things a guy busts his hump over. Money and a woman. Which is killing you? Not a woman. <laughs> There's always a woman. Killing a guy somewhere, sometime. It's just a matter of recognition. Our only salvation lies in the fact that once we have lost, be it a woman or a fortune, there's always a possibility of getting another. 
I'm just looking to get out from what I'm under. Yeah. You need a little help? <clears throat> what do you mean? What do I mean? Marion, that is not a difficult question. Here's an easier one. What do you think of my wife? Good, bad, or indifferent? Never really given it much thought. <laughs> With a body like that, Marion, I find it difficult to believe that you have not given it some thought. Ah, thank you. She's nice. I like her. Yeah, me too. Used to, anyway. There was even a time when I loved her. Things change. All things are relative, I suppose. How much one likes or loves someone depends on the state of decomposition of the relationship, don't you think? I'm not an expert. I want to divorce my wife. I want to divorce my wife. I would like to divorce my wife. Unfortunately, under the divorce laws of this state, she is entitled to 50% of everything I have. I don't mind giving her something. But I've worked too long and too hard to give some broad, especially some broad is not even going to be mine, half of everything that I own. We've got one thing going for us. A prenuptial agreement. Before we got married, I had her sign a piece of paper stating that if she were ever caught in an extramarital relationship, she forfeits all. What does this have to do with me? Miriam, my wife is a client of yours. She likes you. She even finds you attractive. And? You said you needed some help. I'm offering you help. How much do you owe? Give or take. $30,000. That's a lot of dough for a guy in your position. I'll give you $50,000. dollars 25 now and 25 when it's done. You're keeping up with me, Marion, aren't you? 50 grand to have an affair with your wife. Yeah, that. That and... You set it up so that I have enough evidence to keep her out of court. Or if she decides to go to court, it breaks her. Forgive me for not just jumping at the offer. It's a little out of my league. I want you to think about it. Take your time. I'm gonna grab a shower, wash your fingerprints off. Yes! yes. Ooh, did you hear that crap? Did you see that swing? That much, right? I'm gonna use a can. You said like that, didn't you, Bully? Bully had a big swing. Can't you shut up? You know, it's unnatural for a guy to have a swing like that. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it should even be legal. It's up to you. Now that's an ambiguous question. What do you want? Quickly, one forgets. No, I haven't forgotten. Good. Because we want to make sure you don't forget. Because if you forgot, we want to take something from you to help you remember. Do you understand me, Marion? guy approached me the other day. Any guy? Or someone interesting? Well, he asked me to sleep with his wife. Someone interesting. And he offered to pay me. Very interesting. Fifty grand. 
I can only imagine what she looks like. Well, she's quite attractive, actually. He wants to catch her in an affair and use it on her in court. Aren't you lucky? Maybe. So pessimistic? Look, you know my situation. Expensive clientele, decent hours. And look at all the fringe benefits you get. Beats Blue Cross. It's not exactly the way I saw my life going. And this is going to change it? Start. So what's the question? You. It won't break my stride if that's what you're worried about. Besides, why waste all this good practice? Is that what this is? I learned a long time ago how to take care of myself. Why didn't you tell me it was Harry? I wanted to wait. I see how I'd react. Yeah, something like that. Worried I told him about us? I don't get a kick wondering if someone's gonna put a bullet in me. You give Harry too much credit. It doesn't take credit to pull a trigger. I'm gonna buy one. You're funny. I should talk to you more often after we do it. I'm gonna take Harry's offer. I need the money. We're not exactly in the same tax bracket if you hadn't noticed. Whatever else Harry is, the one thing he's not is stupid. Is that why I got the condo? So we don't have to bring your boys back to the house? One of the reasons. If Harry finds out that the man that he's hired to have an affair with his wife is already having an affair with her. You want a divorce, here's your chance. He wants to cheat you out of the money. All right. We go along with Harry's plan. He keeps me informed, I keep him informed. Only all the information I get, I give to you. When it comes due, you use it on him in court. You'll not only get half his money, but you'll get a hell of a lot in damages, too. And what if he doesn't like that you've taken his $25,000 and then didn't deliver? I've worked for guys like Harry all my life. I can handle him. He wants to hire me? He wants to pay me? Fine, I'll clock in and out just like the next guy. Only what you'll be clocking in and out of just happens to be the boss's wife. I couldn't have been going that fast. I was keeping an eye on it. You're right. You weren't going that fast. So what'd I do? The registration sticker's out of date. 
Instructions are on the back. Have a nice day. Hey, tell Tommy I said hi. I will. Hey, Mick. Racing Farms and Porno Magazines. That's what they buy. News rags? I can't get more. When they start putting cops on the payroll. Uh, just a couple of guys with bad debts. Gives them something to do. Geez, this guy's got weak amateur. Can you buy me some time, Mickey? Hey, Marion, you know I don't carry that kind of weight. I'm coming into a big score the next couple of weeks. Yeah, you're always coming into a big score. All right. Week and a half. That's all I'm asking. I'm a little short right now. <sighs> Story of my life. Hey, how's that uh, massage business? It's okay. You know, I get hot just thinking about the flank your fingers have covered. Mickey, come on. Okay, okay, I'll see what I can do. But Marion, if I was you, I wouldn't mess around with this group. They are very serious people. You're all right, Mick. Every guy is curious about his wife. Particularly if she's doing another guy. Back arch, legs askew. One wonders if the positions change. No, positions don't change, Harry. Only the bodies do. Positions always change, Marion. Sometimes before you even know it. I want this thing to go down this weekend. Is that going to be a problem? No problem. I like a man who's confident. I'll bust in, catch the two of you in the sack. I'll make a big scene. Enough so that she thinks it's real. You got the video arranged? It'll be set up. I want it to be incriminating. This woman has been around the block a couple of times. She's very smart. I want it to be tight. I do not want her to have a way out. You're the boss. I'll show up around 10.30. But I don't want to rush the two of you. If I'm a little early, I'll just make myself at home. A check? You should always ask for cash. Well, you don't think he's good for it? I didn't say that. I'm kidding. So how's it supposed to go down? <sighs> well, he bobs in the house. Catches us in bed, there's a whole jealous husband number. Scared? And what could I possibly be scared of? There's always something. there's been a little change of plans. What do you mean? She knows. What are you talking about? You were right, Harry. She's a very smart woman. Obviously a lot smarter than either one of us. 
What about the videotape? She found the camera. What'd she say? Well, she said she had fun while it lasted. She called us both a couple of creeps and left. Left? Where'd she go? Your guess is as good as mine. What about my down payment? I did my part, Harry. I had to break your neck. It's not like playing squash. <laughs> Ten years ago, I would have wallpapered this room with you. Ten years ago, Harry. I'd have never been in this room. Enjoying yourself? I can think of worse things. Like work? Ah. I don't mind work, Joe. Just the people you work for. Tell your gambling friends to stay out of here. You keep that stuff outside. You got a client waiting. I'm not booked till nine. Well, I just rebooked you. You're a real prince, Joe. this morning. He's become ambitious. Might have to. Looks like you just lost a client. <laughs> Moving company came by the day before yesterday. Stripped everything out. Marion, you can't tell anyone I let you in here. Give me another one here, would you, Mike? A bit early for you today, isn't it? I'm ambitious. That might be, but your bank sure isn't. They just denied that card. No, that's... Uh, that's, that's a mistake. No, it isn't. I ran that through twice. Can I use your phone? Sure. You think it'll help? Marion Pooley, eight nine six zero zero four two four three. How can I help you, Mr. Pooley? Well, I'll tell you how you can help me, Beverly. My card has just been denied, and I'd like to know why. It looks like the account is overdrawn. No, that account is not overdrawn. You had a twenty-five thousand dollar deposit return from a PNP account that was closed. And it's taken you two weeks to tell me this.
think you're doing. I'm, I'm sorry, I thought you were... What? I thought you were someone else. Somebody will lock you up. What do you want? This is Detective Armstrong, Metropolitan Police. We'd like it if you could come downtown this morning. Why? We have a few questions concerning Harry Orwitz. This morning? If you wouldn't mind. All right, give me an hour or so. Please, as soon as possible. Yeah. Good <laughs> Mr. Pooley. Detective Armstrong. Partner Dave Brodsky. Hey, please have a seat. Can I get you some coffee? Yeah, black. Mind if I smoke? You go right ahead. I join you, but my wife made me give it up. Gotta <laughs> 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 uh, get that neck looked at. Thank you for your concern. Was Harry Orwitz a client of yours? Yeah, he was. When did you see him last? week or so ago. One of the members of the club said you guys played squash together. Yeah, every once in a while he needed a partner. Huh. What happened to your eye? Girlfriend. We wrestled. Did Orwitz ever say anything to you that seemed weird? You know, out of the ordinary? I heard all kinds of things out of the ordinary. You ever talk about work? Some sort of Import-export business, I don't know. Uh, PMP Inc., Venetian Glass Works. Uh, apparently, he, uh, he did all right in the 80s. A lot of people did. What about his wife? What about his wife? Was she a client? Yeah, she was. Married seven years ago. He's riding high, she's from the other side of the tracks. Word is, it wasn't a match made in heaven. What's this all about? The paper said it was a suicide. You read the paper? I don't know, it was a client. Yeah, especially rich one. Any notion at all as to why Harry Orwitz would want to kill himself? No, not off the top of my head. I can give you four million reasons why he wouldn't, all of them green. Is there any particular reason you wanted to talk to me? Relax. When's the last time you paid a house call to Harry Orwitz? I'd have to check my books. Ballpark. Two weeks. Tell me, you ever do Mr. and Mrs. Orwitz together? No. Mind if we check your books, too? Whatever you need. Anything else? Yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, Coroner's report came in last night. Now, I'm not too good at this stuff, but according to the trajectory of the bullet, it looks like there's no way Harry Orwitz could have killed himself. Looks like we got a homicide. Well, that's good, isn't it? Why is that good? Keeps you guys in business. Huh. Let me ask you one more question before you go. How come you didn't try to come back after the accident? You were young enough, true talent, walked right into the starting lineup. Oh, I was lucky. No, you weren't. You were good. Sorry about the other day. Marion Pooley. 
Your parents are expecting a girl? My parents are expecting a lot of things. Marianne Pooley. You must her, right? Excuse me? That my husband used to go to. Your husband? I'm Jordana Orwitz, Harry's wife. This is Raymond Holloman, my attorney. Hello. Well, we have to get in there now. Well, good luck, Mr. Pooley. Yeah, I, uh, I talked to somebody here like a month ago about employment. Who did you speak with? Uh, I got a name written down here somewhere. Somebody must have given you the wrong information because the company is not doing any hiring right now. I think you have the wrong building. This isn't PMP? PNP. Escorts. Imports. Oh, that explains it. It's someone named Natalie Browning? No. No new clients, Carrie. Okay. Hello? Hello? Everybody's so impatient. Oh, Marion! Mrs. Orwitz booked the house call for four o'clock. I'm surprised you came. Were you expecting someone else? I don't know. You tell me. I wasn't sure I should leave my name at your work. You want a drink? No, thanks. Today's strictly liquid for me. How do you want me? On my back or on my front? We usually start in the back. Special technique? Wrap this around your waist. Aren't you going to turn around? Coast is clear. Is this what you used to do, Harry? Sometimes. You two get close. Some take to others. Some don't. <laughs> That's why I travel so much. It always was better that way. Yeah? You've been out of town? I came back when they called me about Harry. I guess you can say I have an infatuation with the islands. Virgin. Hawaiian. But thanks for the compliment. Would you mind concentrating on my thighs? I've been swimming a lot, and they hurt. It's nice to travel, isn't it? 
Pete's staying home. Yeah, things that bad. Mmm, what some women would do for hands like yours. I guess that's why they pay you the big bucks, huh? House calls. <laughs> yeah, I guess. How many could I get for $25,000? Twenty-five grand, you could get a lot more than a rub down. But that's not what Harry was paying for, is it? Do you mind telling me what you're talking about? Harry was into a lot of things. I just want to know if the twenty-five grand was for one of those things. Or if I should take it to the police and find out if it has something to do with his death. I don't know who killed your husband, Mrs. Orwitz. But you know something. What was the money for? To have an affair with his wife. Is that supposed to be funny? No. You see... I gamble, Mrs. Orwitz. Unfortunately, for the last six months, I haven't gambled well. Your husband knew this. He knew I was in debt. He offered to pay me to help enforce your prenuptial agreement. Now, here's a tricky part. Another client of mine, blonde like you, beautiful like you, said she was Mrs. Orwitz. That's the woman I had the affair with. That's why I stopped you in that Mercedes. And she used to like that Mercedes. Where is this woman now? It's a real good question. You expect me to believe this? Somebody killed your husband, Mrs. Orwitz. Where I fit in, I have about as much idea as you do. I didn't pay you for the massage. It's on the house. Is that what you do, Mr. Pooley? What's that, Mrs. Orwitz? Have affairs with women? Cops come around here asking questions. Then a couple of monkeys you owe dough pop up. Meanwhile, you keep canceling on your clients. Now, I'm not one of these cream puffs you grease up all day long. Whatever this thing is you're into, you're dragging in the club, and I don't like it. Is that it? No, that's not it. Carrie tells me Orwitz's wife booked a house call. What was that about? She wanted a rub down. I thought you didn't want me to cancel. You know what I want? I want you to stay out of the club until you get your act together. You're on leave. Joe, come on. You know I need this job. You're a loser, Bully. You're bad luck. How you doing? Ah, sign this call. It'll pass. Come on, man. Let's take a little walk. What's up? Ah, we'll go up the pier a little ways. Hey, you check out that game last night? Them guys was hitting that ball like it was going out of style, you know? They got some hitters. Yeah. They got depth at the plate, but not in the field. How about you? You lose any money? Would I be betting, Mickey, when I'm already in debt? Ha, ha, ha. Smart boy, Marion. I had a couple of guys win. I had to pay off, but I didn't do too badly. You know what I'm saying? Hello, slugger. How you doing? Oh, hey, Theo, when they let you out? Real smart guy, huh? Okay, Marion, how's things? Uh, you know, one does what one can. What's the deal on your big score? It's coming in. So's my mother-in-law. That don't make it any better. You gotta bring him with you? This is serious, Marion. Sky's about to split wide open and rain on your parade. I'll have it for you in a couple of days, Mickey. Hey! I already bought you all the time I could. We gotta take something now. Sorry, 
and Marion. But if I didn't do it, somebody else would. Bit of a temper. I'm all right. Thanks for asking. You're not all right. You have something to clean that up with? Hope so. Grab the vodka for me, would you? It's gonna hurt. Got a better idea? Spoils of a bad gambling debt? You know, some people have no sense of humor. I can see that. How'd you find where I live? You told me at the club. Yeah. They also give you keys? Oh, no. That was your lovely landlord. He thinks I'm your sister from Scottsdale. You do have a sister, don't you? Wisconsin. I hate Wisconsin. It's too cold. The police know about the money. How? I don't know. They asked me if I knew why Harry gave you 25 grand. I told them I didn't. Can I have one of those? Here, take a couple of these. What are they? Poison. Aspirin. It'll make the swelling go down. I'm sorry about the other day. People handle pain in different ways. It's all right. So why am I sore? When I was laid up in the hospital, I worked five days a week for six months with a physical therapist. Bones, muscles, tissues. I guess the education stuck. Male or female? What's that? Your therapist. <laughs> when I got out of the hospital, I took all the money I had left coming from the team and got on the plane. Woke up three weeks later in a hotel room in Reno, drunk and broke.
was 22 when I met Harry. I was working in a club, cocktailing. He was real careful at first, very protective. <laughs> he gave me a job. I learned a lot from him. I learned how to change what I was doing. I saw it as a compromise. He saw something he liked. I saw things I wanted. He said if he tried to divorce you that you'd take him for half of what he had. That's not true. Money doesn't matter. <laughs> Money always matters. You ever think about playing again? No. Things change. I had a few offers from a couple of farm clubs, though. Assistant coaching, stuff like that. Baseball was everything to you, wasn't it? Started playing when I was seven. North Lewisburg. A little town about an hour outside of Marion, Ohio. <laughs> That's how you got your name? Oh, my dad. Dad had a thing for that city. By the time I was 13, could run faster, hit harder, feel better than any kid I ever came up against. Year into high school, colleges were recruiting me. Year later, pro teams. Fast. Put your coin in the slot, get on the ride, hold on tight. Car flipped. I was pinned under the dash. Knees were crushed. The newspaper said it was the end of a very promising career. Newspapers? <laughs> I was a fan. I guess I still am. The girl. Were you in love with her? Well, there were rumors. Were there? One article said you blamed yourself. It just happened so fast. They said she broke her neck before she hit the ground. Is this some kind of game to you? No, I'm just trying to understand. No one asked you to. This is Pooley. Please leave a message. I'm calling for a friend. She'd like you to call her back. 555-9765. Ask for Natalie Browning. Yeah, you know, work. <laughs> I think you need to get a new girlfriend. This one's leaving marks. You're a funny guy, Detective Frotsky. Can I call you Detective Frotsky? Yeah, you do that. We need to ask you a few more questions. I'm running a bit late right now. Okay, well, this isn't optional. 
You arresting him? Yeah, if we have to. We'd appreciate it if you came downtown. Do I have a choice? You could call an attorney. I'll keep that in mind. Why didn't you tell us about the 25 grand? I didn't think it was important. Excuse me, $25,000 isn't important. Check bounced. Is that why you killed him? It's a little obvious to go around killing somebody who bounces a $25,000 check on you, don't you think? Well, maybe you didn't know the check was going to bounce. So why would I kill him? To cover your tracks. If I was going to cover my tracks, I'd have him pay me in cash. Cash for what? Aren't you following the conversation here, Protsky? We made bets. He lost. He owed me. Appointment books at work said you gave Harry a massage the Friday before he was killed. Someone at the club said they saw you playing squash with him the same afternoon. Yeah, either those are legal. No, they're not illegal. Assault and battery is illegal. I guess that wasn't important either. Four years ago, some guy picked a fight with me in a bar. It wasn't my fault. Oh. Well, that's not the way the judge saw it, pal. We did six months in county. Now, you listen to me, Marion. The bounce checks, the prior A&B, I got enough to book you right now for suspicion. Suspicion of what? Aren't you following the conversation, Pooley? Murder! Dave, Dave, go get us some coffee, will you? Please. If you ever meet my wife, you keep your mouth shut about this, okay? Knees hurt? Some days are better than others. Can you run on them? If I have to. I played some ball. Two years, single A, Missouri. I could hit. But I couldn't field. Harry Orowitz was going to pay me 50 grand to have an affair with his wife to help enforce a prenuptial agreement. Thank you. What did the prenuptial say? That if she was ever caught with another man, that she'd forfeit all. No. I was already involved with this woman, a client of mine, said she was Jordana Orowitz. Wasn't her. Sure wanted me to think so. Who was she? I don't know. She disappeared. Then what? Then someone killed Harry. And then the check bounced. And then the wife shows up. And then people start talking to me about murder. Mrs. Orwich claims she's out of town the last couple of weeks. Plane tickets, hotel reservations, extensive itinerary, all check out. So why would Harry hire you to have an affair with a woman who was not his wife? Maybe he didn't know. What does that mean? I never saw them together. Maybe he thought I was having an affair with his wife. What about the check? It was written on a PNP payroll account that was dry. Why didn't you tell us about it before? Would you have believed me? Who says I believe you now? You're going to be late for work, aren't you, Pooley?
Feeling better? You like sneaking up on people? I thought you were sleeping. How'd I get here? Security at PMP found you outside the building. They called me. I brought you here. You had my keys in your pocket. You know, for a moment there last night, I didn't think you were going to make it. How long was I out? It's midday. You needed the rest. I got to get out of here. Ooh. Easy. Sit down. <laughs> they did a pretty good job. You know, the only reason I didn't call the police it's because I thought it would be better for you if I didn't. Thoughtful. What were you looking for? Who says I was looking for something? You just have a habit of going in places unannounced. No more than you do. If you told me what you were up to, maybe I could help you. I'm going to make you something to eat before you accuse me of starving you to death. All right, all right, that's it. Let's go. How am I? Face like that, I ought to ask you. Little accident. You're in for a bundle, aren't you? I need help, Jimmy. Yeah, word travels fast. Matt, keep the elbow down. Attaboy, that's the way. You know a guy named Raymond Holloman? Holloman? A few years back. Uh, high stakes roller. He brokered a couple of financial deals for the club. What was his role with the team? Strictly money. He was only here for a few years, then he cashed in and moved on. Come on, come on, when was that? As a matter of fact, it wasn't long after your accident. Do you know why he left? Probably just lost interest. Why don't you check the newspapers? They keep track of that stuff. What's the concern? Business. With Holloman? It's great to see you again, Jimmy. Thanks for all your help. Dark side of the moon, Marion. What do you mean? Holloman, those, that crowd he runs with are bad people. They play for keeps. Nearly as much as I used to. You play golf? No, I never was much of a golfer. Ah, too bad. The perfect sport for ex-jocks with bad knees. Could have made a friendly wager. You're a gambling man, aren't you? When I know what I'm betting on. Like baseball? Or brokering deals for baseball. Seems just about the time I was with the club, you were cutting deals in the front office. I've got to get to a golf game. When did PNP start to go under? You know, breaking and entering is a crime, Mr. Pooley. They lock people up for that. What happened to Harry's company? Bad investments. The economy slid, the SNLs went under, and so did Harry. Just like that. It's the way it happens sometimes. Mr. Pooley, people die each and every day in this city. Most of the time, no one even notices. Someone's paid off your bill. 
Who? That's what I'm saying. Someone. They don't know who. They think it's from you. What the hell are you talking about? There are two payments of 15 grand each. Cash. With a note saying Marion Pooley. I didn't pay it. So you got a guardian angel. What, are you going to toss it away? If I was you, Marion, I wouldn't give this a second thought, okay? Just say thank you and move on. girls come in and out of this place. Jack, would you just look at the shot? What's this about, anyway? Do you know her? <laughs> Work with most of them sooner or later. Did a shoot with her about five or six years ago. Used to go by the name of Natalie Browning or something. I don't remember. Wait, wait, wait. So long. What'd you say on your Natalie Browning. What have I reached? Rubies, amigo. It's a bar. I'm, I must have them. But is there somebody there named Natalie Browning? Don't know nobody by that name. I'm a friend. My name is Pooley. Marion Pooley. 8672 Pinto Avenue. Vista Valley. Place starts jumping around 11 o'clock. Your color. Like it. Has a certain needed warmth. You're too kind. They know. You come here a lot. Only when I drink. I had no idea someone was gonna get hurt. Killed. I was hired straight up to do a job. Murder was not a part of it. What sort of job? I wanted to frame his wife in an affair, squeeze her out of some big money. Only the guy who hires me wants to short circuit it. Make Harry think his wife was seeing someone. Only it wasn't her. It was you. Me and 30 grand. Not bad for a damsel in distress. Who was it who hired you? Never met him. Everything I ever got, keys to the condo, money, addresses, I picked up at a post office box. All the information was over the phone. That's the way he wanted it. Just picked you out of the blue? No one's ever picked out of the blue, Marion. Somebody knew me, knew my situation. About six months ago, I was in L.A. and I ran into this girl I used to work with, Erica Pope. We did a couple of soft porns together before she dropped out of the business. She set it up. Erica Pope. She told me to expect a call from some guy we both worked for. He'd gone legit, tried very hard to distance himself from all the bread he made doing pornos. What's his name? 
I never asked. How do you know I had nothing to do with it? Someone was groomed for this. One thing I've learned in my 30 plus years is that money is its own breed. Somehow you don't fit. Sure I do. I'm the guest of honor, the fall guy. You'll stay with me tonight? No, I'm gonna get a room. I feel much better if you stay with me. What about the Jeep? Leave it here. It's only a few blocks. We can walk. All right. Do you want a drink? Sure. Lately, I haven't been able to sleep unless I wet myself down first a little. Whose place is this? One of the dancers from the club. Let's me stay here when I need to. Could I bum one off you? I'm all out. I'm almost out of booze. Where's the nearest liquor store? Uh, about two blocks down on the right. What do you want? <laughs> Quickly, they forget. Vodka and a little tonic if you could. No. I'm going to take a shower. Yeah, Detective Armstrong. I'm sorry, Detective Armstrong isn't on duty now. Do you know how to get a hold of him? Uh, if it's an emergency, I could possibly get a hold no, of him. No, no, listen, just just tell him that Marion Pooley called and that I found the girl. Marion Pooley found the girl. Right. Natalie, I had to get you lights. That's all they had.
Everything coming along all right? Yeah, it's fine, thanks. I'll just send you the boarding cards, and then you can mail them on. Well, that ticket is... I'm going to have to call you back. Is something wrong with the front door? You look like hell. Where you been? Desert. I thought it was supposed to be good for you. You taking a trip? The police were here looking for you. I asked you a question! Yes! I am. I'm sick of this. The police say you knew something about Harry's death. And that you were seen with that woman who was murdered. What am I supposed to believe? Who hired her? I don't know. Yes, you do. You know the affair was set up six weeks before Harry ever approached me. Who set me up? All I know is that Harry went to Raymond and asked him how he could divorce me without losing anything. He wanted to wipe me out. Who set it up? Raymond did. Raymond set it up. We were having an affair. It's over now. He just wanted to help me out. Look, the prenuptial agreement says that if I was caught having an affair, I forfeit all. It also said that if I initiated the divorce, I forfeit all. So? So I didn't want to forfeit all. I wanted a little something more than a greeting card that says thanks for the memories, okay? But I don't know who wanted to kill Harry. I swear. What about who wanted to kill Natalie? Who? The woman who was hired to be you! I didn't know. You knew about Sylvia, though, didn't you? That's how you had all that information on me. You didn't get it from the papers. You got it from her uncle. From Raymond, didn't you? Some people never learn, do they, Pooley? If you're not busy, there's something I'd like to show you. Something I think you might find interesting. You can come too, dear. This might be good for you. <laughs> hey! Necks break so easily, don't they, Mr. Pooley? But then you know that. You have first-hand experience. They won't hurt me, Marion. Let her go. And I'll go with you. You get in the car, nothing will happen to her. So this is what it's like to be a big-time baseball hero. <laughs> One day your front page news, the next you can't get a seat at the stadium. You killed Harry, didn't you? You were siphoning money out of his company and you found a way to get rid of him and blame it on me. And then Natalie Browning, who you hired to play Mrs. Orowitz, walked out of the show before you could knock her off. So you had to wait until she contacted me and then you tracked her down. Killed her too. That's good. Anything else? Yeah. I want to get out of the car. Soon enough. How much does she know about all this? Does that matter to you? Let her go. No matter how smart we think we are, life just seems to be full of surprises, doesn't it, Pooley? 
Simon, stop the car. No, Raymond. He doesn't want to be with you anymore, sweetheart. Look familiar, Pooley? You really think you can get away with murder? You did? Isn't this where it happened? It was an accident. Halfway across the bridge, speeding. The car split the divider and I swerved. You lost control. You crashed. But you lived. She died. I survived. That's not the same thing as living. Do you know what it's like? To have the thing that you loved the most suddenly ripped away from you? From my apartment, I, I see this bridge. I see it almost every night, ever since the accident. And sometimes, when it's late and I look very close, I see you and Sylvia coming across the bridge. Sylvia never told me about you. Goodbye, Pooley. Because she ran away from you, didn't she? Get out of the car. It was you. You raped her. You abused her for years. And you call that love.
Obviously, he blamed you for Sylvia's death. When Harry wanted a divorce, he saw a way to put it all together. Drain the PNP accounts, kill Harry, pin it on you. I'm gonna use Natalie to set me up in the affair. Make it look like I was trying to blackmail Harry with some ex-porno gal. Believe me, he had a large pool to draw from. Early on, that's how Raymond made most of his money. Pornos. Bad check for 25 grand and I try to bump them both off? Your story doesn't hold up because the wife doesn't know you. The money? Can't locate it. It's probably in some foreign account and that's where it'll sit until someone takes notice. And no one else knew. No one else was involved. Erica Pope. What about Erica Pope? We're still checking her out. Eight or nine years ago, she did some skin flicks for Raymond. We're trying to track him down, but it's been tough. I know what you're thinking. We checked everything. No prints, no evidence, nothing. She is clean. Is there such a thing? Seems. Where are you headed? Up north. Farm club. Mm -hmm. Baseball. The last salvation. They offered me an assistant spot. Well, not everyone should live in the city. That's what they say. And you? Mediterranean? Got a friend who's just dying to show me an island. Why didn't you tell me you paid off my debt? It's money Harry owed you. If it bothers you, maybe you can come along and I'll show you how you can work it off. Take care of yourself. You too. No one in town would have this tape of me. Even at that, it's freak luck. Some nut went around a few years back and bought up all the cassettes. Except one that. Erica Pope. Had a lot of talent, though. As you can see. Pooley. You ever play ball anymore? What do you want me to do with the tape? 